Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You feel tough tonight, Israel? Yeah. Hallelujah. It is Yahweh that has given us life this day. Yeah. It wasn't by any strength of our own, yeah. but it's only by the mercies of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. I do want to continue tonight, Israel, yeah, as I've been talking about the ish, the fire of Almighty Yahweh. And the last time that I was up, I described to us a little bit concerning the purge or how Yahweh purges us, or the purging process of Almighty Yahweh. And one thing we must understand as a people, in this last hour, Yahweh, the only way he's going to purge us is by fire, Yisrael. It's by the trials, it's by tribulations, it's by the heat of the test that is going to prove us, Yisrael. As we use the example so many times concerning silver, concerning gold, in order for you to get to the pure essence of that, it takes heat. That's the only way. It takes heat, even to the point of the meltdown of the product, of the silver or of the gold, Yisrael. It's important that we as a nation be humble before Almighty Yahweh. If I must use that word, we must melt down before him. We must kneel down before him. We must become to a low estate, Yisrael. Many times we as a people want to lift ourselves up. We want to set ourselves up on a pinnacle. But what are we worth? Without the Ruah of, of Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael, we're not worth anything. But yet, we lift ourselves up in our pride. We lift ourselves up in our flesh and our strength, which there is none, above Almighty Yahweh. Do we think that we're going to get away? Don't you know that's mocking Yah? Hallelujah. The world mocks Yahweh every day, Yisrael. So let's be far from mocking Yahweh. What is that? Saying that his name is worthless? That what is happening is not of his hand? That he's not in control? He's in control of all things, Israel. Yeah. There, are, there are a few things in Torah that move Almighty Yahweh. What is that, Zakin Yeramiah? The welling and the crying of his people? Did not he move in Mizraim? Yes. By what reason? By reason of the affliction of the taskmasters. We must understand that we are still surrounded by Mizraim, Yisrael. Yes. So is Yahweh's ear heavy that he cannot hear us in this hour? If we cry unto him with a pure left, he hears us, Yisrael. Yes. Not only that, but he also hears the cry, which is um, expressed in a different way of the wicked. No, it's not that he hears the lowest state of the wicked, but when the wicked cry, it's clamorous. There's folly. There's jocularity. There's mocking of Almighty Yahweh. Does Yahweh move? When it reaches his throne, he moves, Israel. With his anger, with the vast judgment, and with his fiery indignation, he moves, Israel. We don't want to provoke Yahweh in that realm. Sure, we want him to judge us. We want him to reprove us, but not in his hot displeasure. Not in his fiery ish or the coals of his voice, Yisrael. For when he speaks that, it will consume us to where we're nothing, not even a nation before him, Yisrael. So I do want to begin a few examples of times where Yahweh was moved. And remember, we're still talking about the ish or the fire or the seven ruach him, the seven ruach of Almighty Yahweh, his voice. If you would turn me to Genesis, Bereshit, chapter 6, verse 5, I want to begin reading. Concerning the wickedness of the people in the days of Noah. Did not he warn Noah of the judgment of his cleansing process, which at this time was by the water. Hallelujah. At this time, men continued drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, and their folly up until the very day that the rains came. Noah, he prophesied through the rock of Almighty Yahweh from that which was given unto him that the rain was coming, the judgment of Almighty Yahweh to purge mankind. To cleanse the world of wickedness, of transgression, unto Almighty Yahweh. 
It got to the point where it even reached his, his throne. Hallelujah. So let us begin Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. And Yahweh saw that the evilness of the sons of Adam, of man, was great in the earth. It was great. The wickedness of man was multiplied much, as it is in this day, Israel. And that every imagination, think about the things you imagine, Israel. Every imagination of the thoughts of his love, of his heart, of his mind. Anything he desired to do in his heart and his mind, Scripture said, it was only evil, what? Continuously. Continuously. No tough thoughts. What is that? Minds of Almighty Yahweh, walking in the statutes of Almighty Yahweh. Everything man thought and everything man did was against the commandments, against the will of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 6. And it repented Almighty Yahweh. You mean the creator of all things, the maker of all things, had to repent? It says he repented that he had made man on the old land. Don't you understand the wickedness of this time, Israel? We as a people must understand that Yahweh, he is not going to receive anything that is unpure that is unclean, that does not line up with the Torah, Yisrael. Not anything. And it grieved him at his heart, at his left. And Yahweh said, I will destroy the sons of man, of Adam, whom I have created from off the face of the earth. Does it say that, Yisrael? Where are the men today? There's very few men. The image that Yahweh created from the beginning has been destroyed, Israel. It has been taken from the earth. It's only by the man, Yahshua HaMashiach, that we have any measure of what a man in this hour should be, how a man of this hour should stand, Israel. He said both the sons of Adam, not only that, but the beasts and the creeping things, the fowls of the air, the birds. For it repents me that I have made them. Yeah. Don't you see how fast and how far the wickedness and the corruption of man, mm-hmm. that even the stench of it, went before the nostrils of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Yahweh, there's many things that he, if I may use this word, that he allows. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That he suffers to go forth, Israel. Yeah. But this is the last straw. At this time and age, we're at the last straw of the Yom Akharis, Israel. We're in the last days. Just as it was in the days of Noah, of Noah, so, is it, so shall it be, or it is at this time and the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach. Don't you believe his coming is now, Israel? Even at the door, it's so close. Hallelujah. But it says in verse 8, this is us, Israel. But Noah, he found a merited... Ahava, love and favor in the eyes of Almighty Yahweh. I'm glad that Yahweh tonight has shown his unmerited favor in Ahava. Hallelujah. Unto me. Unto the house, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, as it says there. And perfect in his generation. Should not we as a people be separated from the spirit of this generation? That we would be a Sadiq people set apart for the service of Almighty Yahweh, perfect. And Noah walked with Yahweh. How many of us are walking with Yahweh today, Israel? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahweh is with us. He has written his Torah in our nephesh. Does not the Torah say we abide in him? That he will abide in us, Israel. And Noah, he begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Yaphith, verse 11. It says that the earth was also corrupt before Almighty Yahweh. What is corruption, Israel? It's anything that pollutes. 
Anything that varnishes or that cover an object that is perfect. That's what corruption is. When Yahweh created the Shemayims the Shemayim and the Olam, did not he say it was perfect, that it pleased him? But because of the sin of man, it caused a great corruption in the land of Yisrael. Even in the house of Yisrael today, there's corruption. That's why it is important that the Dom of Yahshua continues to cleanse. Does the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, does it stop reproving us, Yisrael? Does it stop correcting us? Hallelujah. It continually, day by day, perfects us. And it purifies us, Yisrael. It said that the earth was filled with violence. Just look around you today. Do we not see the violence that is increasing? Just in the past couple of weeks, even in Charlotte, there have been three or four killings under age men, under 16. Just the young, young men. They pull the gun out of each other. They shoot. No reserve of life. No fear of Almighty Yahweh. And it's happening throughout this nation and around the world, Yisrael. Y'all violence. And Yahweh looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way. His way, his direct, his direction, his word, Yisrael. That which he has established from the beginning. Upon the earth. And Yahweh said unto Noah, as he said unto Israel tonight, that the end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Did not Yahweh destroy every living thing except that which was on the ark of safety, Israel? We better be in the art of safety today. Because when the judgment of Yahweh falls, just like it did in the days of Noah, nothing stood. If it was not in the ark, it died. It didn't survive. The waters, they stayed for hundreds of days, Israel, for a hundred days or more. And it even covered the mountains. So was there a refuge for man? The only refuge was in the ark. Don't you know our ark today is Yahshua HaMashiach? That our only safety is in the Torah, the Mishvah of Almighty Yahweh. There's no other way, Israel. There's no other way to be preserved in this hour unless we have this written in our love, Israel. We cannot deny the word, for if we deny the word, we deny, deny Yahshua HaMashiach. We deny his dawn. We deny the offering that has been sent from Almighty Yahweh, his only begotten son, Yisrael, given for the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Let's move on to chapter 7, hallelujah, of Genesis, chapter 7, verse 21. Do we not think at this hour, Yisrael, at this time, the Yom Akarif, that Yahweh, he's not going to send his judgment upon this earth without measure. Except it's not going to be with the waters as it was in the days of Noah, Israel. It's going to be by fire. By fire. The fire of his voice. As he speaks judgment to an untoward generation. What is that? A generation that is not walking after Almighty Yahweh. Have turned their backs on Almighty Yahweh. Chapter 7, verse 21, Genesis. It says that, and all flesh died. Did it say all flesh? flesh. Cool. Yeah. So that means the flesh of beast, yeah. of the foul, creeping things. There was nothing left, Israel. All flesh died that moved upon the earth, both foul and of cattle and of beast, and every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. And every son of Adam, of man. And it says in verse 22 that all in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land, it died. This is showing a cleansing of the wickedness. Yahweh purging the earth 
Is he going to purge us the same way, Israel? By his Torah? By his Mishvah? When his Torah goes forth, nothing stands, Israel. We shouldn't uphold anything in our hearts, not any thought, not any image, anything that is not of Almighty Yahweh. What are those things? We know what those things are, Israel. The acts of the flesh, lies, concupiscence, drunkenness, not just drunkenness of the body, but drunkenness of the mind, Israel. But the drunk man, when he is drunk, does he know where he is going? It's not his way um, or his sight somewhat diminished. Is his step sure, Israel? A drunk man's steps are not sure. So we cannot be drunk in this hour. It's a symbol for Almighty Yahweh. We as Israel, we should be sharp, on point. Our ears should be open always to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And we should take heed to what? Ourselves. Hallelujah. If you love yourself, you will take heed to yourself. You will watch yourself, your actions. And what will that do? Well, you'll be able to watch your eye or your hope. You'll be able to correct your eye and your hope. If you can't correct yourself or keep yourself in line, Israel, how are you going to instruct your eye? Come on. So we must take heed to ourselves. Hallelujah. That we're not entering the spirit of drunkenness in this hour. Hallelujah. Verse 23. And every living substance was maha. It was destroyed. When Yahweh destroys something, Israel, there's nothing left. Sin, there's nothing left. Wickedness, there's nothing left, Israel. Every substance was maha. It was destroyed. What is that to wipe out? Or to blot. Don't you know that the dawn of Yahshua, Mahad, or it blotted out our transgression? Yes. Almighty Yahweh, he's, he doesn't look at, once the dawn of Yahshua washes, he doesn't bring that back up, Israel. Yes. It has been covered by the dawn. As the old condition said, we have been covered, covered by the dawn. Hallelujah. Of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. But every substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both sons of Adam, of man, cattle, and every creeping thing, Fowl of the Shemayims, and they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive in the ark of safety. Where are we today, Israel? Are we, are, are we, are, are we in the ark of safety? Are we dwelling in Yahshua HaMashiach? Don't you know that the judgment of, of, of Almighty Yahweh is only pending? We have not seen his judgment and his hot displeasure and his anger, Israel. Not yet, but it is coming. And when the fire of Yahweh's judgment comes, it's going to consume everything, every living thing. Unless you're in the ark, that ark is Yahshua HaMashiach. It said that only Noah remained alive and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters, it says, prevailed upon the earth. It had its way. It overcame the earth. And hundred and 50 days, yeah. nothing stood. Yahweh even made sure that the water did not diminish rapidly, but it stayed, it says here, for 150 days. 150 days, Israel. Yeah. The judgment of Almighty Yahweh. Yes, sure. Who can stand in the Yom or the day of Almighty Yah? Yeah. No man can stand. Unless we are abiding in the Torah, the ark of safety, Yahshua HaMashiach, there's no way that we're going to be saved, Israel, or preserved to the last day. Let us move on. Let us move on to Exodus, Shemoth chapter 2, verse 23 through 24, I want to read. Nothing stands in the way of Almighty Yahweh's judgment. So, we as a people, do we think we can transgress the Torah, that we can sin and not face the judgment of Almighty Yahweh? It's not going to happen, Israel. You may get by for a time, or you think you may get by, but the judgment of Yahweh, it stands, Israel. It says in Shema, Exodus chapter 2, verse 23, and it came to pass in the process of time. Where is this? That the king of Egypt died, 
And the sons of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. Not being able to move. No freedom. Being shackled, Israel. And it says here that they cried. And their cry came up to who? To Yahweh. Did he move? Hallelujah. Did Yahweh hear the cries of Yisrael, out of Israel? And their cry came up to Yahweh by reason of their bondage. And Yahweh, he heard their groaning. We're groaning, Israel. Hallelujah. Are not you groaning? Does not the earth groan for the manifestation? Of the revelation, of the revealing of the sons of Almighty Yahweh Israel. What is that earth? Was not Adam created from the dirt or the dust? Though we yearn for the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach, don't we want him to come, Israel? Don't you know there's a lot in that package? The judgment of Yahweh also comes when Yahshua comes. Do we really desire that, Israel? I desire that. I want the things that are in me to be revealed now. I don't want my, I want my sins to go before me unto judgment, Israel. Yeah. Judge me now, Yah. Yeah. Show me my ways yeah. that I may be corrected, that the inch of the fire of your word yeah. will burn in my lair, yeah. that everything that is not of you will be purged out. Because yeah. you're not going to want your sins to come behind you in the judgment of Almighty Yahweh, Israel. Yeah. And Yahweh heard their groaning. And Yahweh, he's our God. He remembered his covenant with Abram, with Yitzhak, and with Yaakov. But you know, the only reason we're here today, Israel, is because Yahweh, he remembered his covenant. He remembered his promises. Aren't you glad for that, Israel? Yeah. Hallelujah. So we see that Yahweh, he moved in the days of Noah at the wickedness of man. And also he moved at the crying of Yisra'el. Two examples, Yisra'el. And I will show us another. Don't you know the world even today is progressively becoming worse and worse? Wicked, Russia, before Almighty Yahweh. It's just a moment of time. As a matter of fact, it already has reached the throne of Almighty Yahweh. But he's reserving his judgment, Israel, yeah. for a specific day. Yeah. And also, he's preparing us, most importantly, Israel, and we'll be ready. Yeah. Let us not be foolish as the five foolish versions. Yeah. But let us be wise. Let us understand the time, Israel. Let's have our lamp trim and burning bright. Yeah. So as the bridegroom, groom, Yahshua HaMashiach, comes, and the cry goes out, we will be in our mind to hear, Israel, yes, and ready. Let us move on back to Genesis 18, verse 20. Concerning Sodom and Gomorrah. If you recall the last time, not, this, not past Shabbat, but on, on, on Kavay Scripture Truth, I made mention of Yahweh's judgment. Will he destroy his chosen, his people, though that walk, Sadiq, righteous? Will he destroy them with the wicked? I don't know if you recall that, but I'm going to revisit that, Yisrael. Yeah. Do we think that Yahweh is unjust? What is that, Zakin Yeramia? Does he say a thing and not perform it? Or does he make a promise and he doesn't keep it, Yisrael? Yeah. Will Yahweh destroy Yisrael with the wicked? When we look back at Torah, Yisrael, we see, we understand that even this example of Sodom and Gomorrah, that when the judgment of Yahweh fell, the fire and the brimstone, there was nothing left. And there was a plea from one that was chosen to be delivered that went out. That if there were just a few righteous men, Sadiq men in this city, would you not destroy it? Hallelujah. Do we think that Yahweh 
is going to let this world go as it's going, Yisrael. It's not going to be. The abomination that goes forth before the throne of Almighty Yahweh, he is, like I said, just preserving his wrath. He's just preserving it, Yisrael. He's holding the floodgates back. But once he unleashed his hot displeasure, nothing's going to be left. And we will see that in, in Exodus chapter, I mean Genesis chapter 18 as I proceed, verse 20. And Yahweh said, because the cry, did it say the cry? Of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, the wickedness, the mocking, the thoughts, just as it was in the day of Noah. They did everything that crossed their mind that was wicked before the presence of Almighty Yahweh. It's great. And because of their sin, the transgression of the Torah, it is very, very grievous. He said, I will go now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which it says is come up unto me. But if not, he said, I will know. Don't you think, don't you know Yahweh, he knows what takes place? He's a warrior, right, y'all. His eye is upon his Sadiq, is it not? Is not he with, with us, Israel? Yeah. But also, he sees the wickedness of man. Yeah. Verse 22. Concerning the men that was there. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abram stood yet before Almighty Yahweh. Does not Yahweh send men? He sent his Malak. His messengers, Yisrael, yeah. did not he send messengers to war yeah. at the coming judgment of the fire of Almighty Yahweh? That's the truth. And the man, it says here, they turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abram, he stood yet before Almighty Yahweh. Verse 23. And Abram, he drew near. Are we drawing near unto Almighty Yahweh, unto the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael? Yeah. Or do we find ourselves backsliding, being moved from Almighty Yahweh? I don't want to be moved from the rock of Almighty Yahweh in this hour. So he, Abram, he drew near, it says, and he says, will you suffer? Will you destroy? Don't you know there are things in our life that needs to be destroyed, Israel? By the ish or by the fire. He said, will you destroy or sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Is Yahweh going to do that in this hour, Yisrael? Will he destroy Yisrael? Did he destroy Yisrael when there was a Mizraim? When the judgment of Almighty Yahweh fell upon Mizraim, whether it was the plague of the frogs, of the blood, was not Yisrael in Gosha protected under the wings of Almighty Yahweh that his judgment didn't come now to dwelling? Hallelujah. Don't you know that we... Should dwell in Gosha, Yisrael, in the safety of Almighty Yahweh, in his arms. Verse 24, preventure, there be 50 righteous, he's pleading, within the city. Will you destroy and not spare the place for 50 Sadiq that are therein? He said, that be far from you to do after this manner. Is he reproving Almighty Yahweh? Reminding Almighty Yahweh. He said to move or to slay, to kill the righteous in your judgment with the wicked. And that the Sadiq, the righteous, should be as the wicked. But you know, Yahweh, he knows who, where his people are. He knows who we are. Even before we knew him, his mercies, Shed upon us, he knew us, Yisrael. And that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from you. The wicked is separated far from Almighty, from Almighty Yahweh. But we as the people of Almighty Yahweh are close, or we should draw near. Shall not the judgment of all the earth do just judgment? Should not Yahweh, the, Almighty, the judge of the earth, do justice or do judgment, Yisrael, righteously? Does not he divide the flames of fire, Yisrael? His ish. 
And Yahweh said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then will I spare all the place for their sake. Don't you know Yahweh, he knew that he would not find that many people righteous in Sodom and Gomorrah. There's not many that are Sadiq in this world today, Israel. Yeah. We do well, or we are in Egypt, or this Sodom and Gomorrah is around us, Israel. And it should grieve our hearts. It should grieve our level of the wickedness that we are surrounded by, Israel. Yeah. And we should cry, or be as a people that cry for deliverance of Almighty Yahweh, for the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach, for the judgment of Almighty Yahweh, the purging of Almighty Yahweh, not just upon this world, but even in our lives. In our minds, Israel. This Solomon and Gomorrah, because in the flesh there dwells no tough thing. No tough thing, Israel. Verse 27. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak to sovereign almighty Yahweh, which am but dust and ashes. That's all we are, Israel, dust and ashes. But yet, don't you know that even in this hour we can speak unto almighty Yahweh and he will hear us? A pure palah prayer unto him, Israel, and he will answer. His ear is not heavy that he will not answer, Israel. Neither is his arm short that he cannot save. Let us move on. Verse 28, prevent it, there shall lack five of the 50 righteous. Will you destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, if I find there 40 and five, he said, I will not destroy it. How many did he find in the days of Noah? Righteous Israel. Was there many? Was there 50? Was there 45? There were just a few. Noah and his household upon the ark. And he spake to him again and said, Provincial, there should be 40 found there. And he said, see, even in his own love, he knew that Sodom and Gomorrah, that there was not this many that was Sadiq in this hour with Israel. He kept counting down on the numbers. 40. Will you spare it for his sake? Verse 30. And he said to him, Oh, let not the sovereign almighty Yahweh be angry. I will speak. He spoke yes, yet again, Israel. Yeah. Prevent there be 30 found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find 30. Yes. And he said, Behold, behold, no. Behold now. I have taken upon me to speak to sovereign Yahweh, provincial there should be 20 found. And he said, I will not destroy it for 20's sake. And he said, oh, let not the sovereign Yahweh, almighty Yahweh be angry. He said, I will speak, but yet this once. Provincial just 10, just 10 shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for 10's sake. And Yahweh sent his way and soon as he, as soon as, as soon as he had left communion with Abram, and Abram he returned to his place. He returned to his place, Israel, as he spoken unto Almighty Yahweh. Do we return unto Almighty Yahweh, Israel? Let us remain in our place. Let us stay under the wings of protection of Almighty Yahweh. Did you see how careful this man of Almighty Yahweh was, even though he spoke unto Almighty Yahweh? He was very careful with his words. But even at this, Yahweh knew what would happen on the Solomon Gomorrah. Are we... Israel, y'all, stepping out of the bounds of where we should be? Are we trying to divert the judgment of Almighty Yahweh? We should desire the judgment of Yah. Whether it's upon what we deem to be our family or flesh and blood. Don't you know that Noah, 
that he warned, that he preached and proclaimed the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. But the people did not hear Yisrael. Well, Only Yahweh adds unto his by it. Yeah. Only Yahweh takes away yeah. from the house of Yisrael. Yeah. It's not in our power to somewhat, as we think, try to convince those that will not even listen so unto the word of Almighty Yahweh. We should not even cast the precious pearls of Almighty Yahweh before those that are swine. If anything, let your example, the way you live, be a testimony of the power of Almighty Yahweh. And if preventure Yahweh convicts one, he will bring him in. He will bring the person in, Yisrael. Because Yahweh, he knows those that are his. The mark of his covenant. He knows his covenant. He knows those that are his, Yisrael. So let us not stand in the way of Almighty Yahweh. Because you're not going to be able to save anyone but yourself. Hallelujah. In Solomon and Gomorrah, in this hour, you're not going to be able to save anyone but yourself, Yisrael. We must understand that and realize that. If there are those that don't want to walk after the statutes of Almighty Yahweh, you're going to have to let them go, Yisrael. You can't keep holding on. Or call that which Yahweh has called curse. You call it blessed. You cannot do that, Yisrael. For what Yahweh has cursed, it is cursed. And whom Yahweh has blessed, is blessed, Yisrael. Let's move to verse 15, the same chapter. Hallelujah. I want to move up to verse 15. Genesis chapter 18. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 19 verse 10. That's where I want to go. 19 verse 10. The judgments of Almighty Yahweh. Upon a wicked and a perverse generation. Will Yahweh destroy the righteous, the Sadiq, with the wicked Yisrael? No, he will not. He will not do that. Well, there have, though, there have been those that came that have fallen by the wayside. It's just Yahweh purging his, his house, Yisrael. For if they were part of this house, no doubt would they have remained with us, Yisrael, or would have continued on in the moon. Now. They would not have failed or fallen at the time of tribulation or time of trial, Yisrael. Genesis chapter 19, verse 10. But the men, they put forth their hand. This is concerning um, Solomon and Gomorrah, Yisrael, st stepping back a little bit. But the men, talk about the message of Almighty Yahweh, put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house. Unto them and shut to the door. Are we in the body of, of Almighty Yahweh? Yes. Have the message of Almighty Yahweh pulled us yes. into the house? Yes. This ark of safety yes. through the door, the door being Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. He has pulled us into his house. Yes. And it says, the messengers, the men, they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness. Don't you see how those that are outside of the ark, that are outside of the Bayat Yisrael, are blind Yisrael? They don't see the judgment of Yahweh coming. This world don't see the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. They're yet continuing in their folly and their drunkenness. Like, there's no end, Yisrael. There's no fear. It said they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. But you know, the wicked cannot find this door, Yahshua HaMashiach. No matter how hard they look, Yisrael, the door is not going to be open unto them. Only the door is open unto, unto Yisrael. Verse 12. Then the man said unto Lot, 
Have you here any besides the son-in-law and your son, your daughters, and whosoever you have in the city? It says to bring them out of this place. Well, not Noah, even at the time of Noah, well, they're not gathered all into one place, Israel. We should all be gathered into one place. We should all have one eye, singleness of mind, singleness of love. We should all be marching, oppressing, for the mark, the high calling, what is that of Yahshua HaMashiach? Yeah. Not a house divided. Because even the world said a house divided cannot stand, Yisrael. Yeah. So we cannot be a house that is divided. Verse 13. It says, for we will destroy this place. It says, because the cry of them is becoming great before the face of Almighty Yahweh. And Yahweh has sent us to destroy the city to abolish to wipe it out and like he went out in verse 14 and spoke to his son-in-law which married his daughters and said get up let's go get you out of this place for Yahweh will destroy this city but he seen as one that was mocking unto his son-in-law don't you see what family, what we call family would do? Yes, right, y'all. They will mock you. Why? Because they don't believe. See, even Lot, when he explained the situation, the judgment of Almighty Yahweh, how he's going to come and his fierce anger and destroy the city, it seemed that he was a man that was full of foolishness, of mockery. It seemed like a foolish thing unto them. Verse 16. And while he lingered, it says that the men took hold of his hand. The messengers took hold of his hand. And upon the hands of his wife, and upon the hands of his two daughters, and Yahweh being merciful unto him, and they brought them forth and set them without of the city. Don't you see what Yahweh has done in this hour, Yisrael? He has set up without of the city, or out of the city, out of this mindset, we should not be entangled with the affairs of this world. Did we not hear Ak Shemri yeah. says that a soldier should not be entangled with the affairs of this life or of this world, Yisrael? We cannot be entangled with the affairs of this life. We cannot run after or go after the things that the heathen or the wicked go after. What is that, money? They go after their money, after their cars, riches, wealth. Those, those things, Yisrael, we should lay up in the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. It should not be these physical things that we seek after. But it should only be what? The Torah. To please Almighty Yahweh. To walk in the light of Yahshua HaMashiach. To purify and purge ourselves from the world. For the things of this life. The things that try to bind us or hold us down, Yisrael. We need to cry out unto Almighty Yahweh. This is a time where the voices of Yisrael need to be heard. Hallelujah. We need to humble ourselves before Almighty Yahweh. Verse 17. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad. Had not Yahweh brought us out, Yisrael? He's brought us out. He has sent his messenger to redeem us. Has he not sent Yahshua HaMashiach to redeem us, Yisrael? To bring us out, to preserve us, to keep us. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, escape for your life. Don't you know this is for our life, Yisrael? Our life in Yahshua HaMashiach that we must escape the spirit of this age. And look not, we should not look behind us, Yisrael. Should we look to those things that Yahweh has redeemed us from? That the Dhamma Yahshua has purged and cleansed us, Yisrael? Why should we look back? Why should we look back unto this Sodom and the Gomorrah of this age, unto Mizraim? As Zakim Benjamin says so many times, we come out of Mizraim, but we find that there's so much of Mizraim that is still left within us. So it takes the purging process of Almighty Yahweh. 
It takes his mishvah, his Torah in our lives, Israel, that we will be purged by the trials and the tribulation that cleanse us, that keeps us, that we will not be destroyed as the wicked is destroyed, Israel. For his judgment is upon the wicked, those that walk contrary to his mishvah and his Torah. It says also in verse 17, as I continue, he says, look not behind you, neither stay you in the plains, not even the low places of the city. Escape to the mountains unless you be consumed. That's our only safety, Israel, is in the mountains. It's in the high places. I know there's a lot of metaphors and example, Israel, but it's important that we have the mind of Yahshua, that we understand what Torah is saying unto us. We must flee unto the high places of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. That we may escape the judgment. Verse 18. And it says that Lot said unto them, O oh, not so, my master. Behold, now your servant has found a merited pardon in your sight. And you have magnified your mercy, which you have shown to me in saving my life. Yes. Hallelujah. We have been saved. Our life has been saved in Yahshua HaMashiach, the messenger from Almighty Yah. And I cannot escape to the mountain, he says here, lest some evil take me and I die. Are we afraid to escape to the mountains, Israel? Yeah. Don't you know if Yahweh sent the messengers to redeem or to save Lot from the city, that he would even keep Lot living in the mountains, Israel. Let us move on and see what happened here. Verse 20. Behold, behold, no, this city is near to flee to. And it is a little one. It's not a large city. And he says here, Lot, Oh, let me escape there, and my soul shall live. And he said to him, See, I have accepted you concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which you have spoken. But he says, Haste you, and escape there, for I cannot do anything until you come unto that place or come there. Don't you know that Yahweh, he's not going to do anything, Israel, until we are in the place that we should be, in the place of safety, until we are well prepared and ready for, if I may say, the bottom to fall out, Israel. We must be ready and we must be prepared. Hallelujah. He says, therefore, the name of the city was called Zar. And the sun was risen up in the earth when Lot entered into Zar. And it says, when he entered into that place of safety, or this small city, he didn't head to the mountains, but he headed to the city. It says in verse 24, then Yahweh reigned. Yes, he did. Right then he reigned. He reigned upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone. And fire from the Shemayans. And he overthrew those cities. He consumed the cities. And all the plain. And all the inhabitations of the city. And that which grew upon the ground. So everything was consumed. The buildings were consumed. The people that dwelled there was consumed. Even the living things that was on the ground, creeping things, the plants, it all was consumed and burned up, Yisraeli. There was nothing left. Just as it was in the days of Noah, when the judgment of Almighty Yahweh fell, he sent water, did he not? Was there anything left standing? Was there anything living that could breathe? Only that which remained on the ark was saved, Yisraeli. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah, the only reason Lot was saved is that Yahweh sent his messengers to warn, to forewarn him, to move Israel out of this place because of the judgment. Did he send the judgment while he was there? 
Did he send the judgment while he was fleeing? No, he only sent the judgment when Lot got to the place where he intended him to be, a safe haven, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. And our safe haven is Yahshua. Our safe haven is the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. So we must abide there, Yisrael. We must abide there. Because if we do not move or we do not walk in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, as he has sent his judgment, Yisrael, we will be consumed. Why? Because if we are Sadiq, we will abide in the Torah. We will do all that Yahweh has commanded us. Hallelujah. And we won't be consumed with the wicked. Yahweh is not going to let us be consumed with the spirit of this age, Israel. He's going to keep us. He's kept us this, bar, this far by Imuna, has he not? Hallelujah. If it wasn't by the keeping of the Torah, the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh resting upon me, Israel, there's no way I could stand. If it wasn't for his messengers warning me, reminding me not to go back because of the judgment of Almighty Yahweh, the fire and the brimstone of Almighty Yahweh, if it wasn't for the Torah continually being preached and continually being on my mind, Israel, there's no way I would be able to stand. Hallelujah. But because he has placed me right here, where I am today, Israel, at Teshua, where I am today in Yahshua HaMashiach, his place of safety. Hallelujah. That's the only reason we're not consumed, Yisrael. That's the only reason. Hallelujah. Continuing. In verse uh, 25. And we overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitation of the cities and that which grew up of the ground. Verse 26. But his wife, she looked back, Yisrael. Do we find ourselves looking back? Looking back where Yahweh has redeemed us from. He has delivered us from Solomon, Gomorrah, from Mizraim. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abram, he got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before Almighty Yahweh. You remember the place where he stood before Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael? And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward the lands of the plain. And behold, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass that when Yahweh destroyed the cities of the plain, that Yahweh, he remembered Abram and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrown and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrown when he overthrew the city in which Lot dwelt. Hallelujah. So Yahweh, he's not going to destroy us, Yisrael, in his fiery indignation. His wrath that is pending, Yisrael, the fire and the brimstone is preserved only for the wicked. So he's not going to destroy us, Yisrael. He's not going to allow us, even at this time, our faith to be destroyed. For Satan, the enemy, to rob us of the wealth that he had gave us, Yisrael. Yahweh, he's not going to allow that. He has kept us this far. And it's only by his mercies that shall continue to keep us, Yisrael. It's only by his Torah that shall continue to keep us. So the ish and the fire and the nation of Almighty Yahweh is reserved for the wicked. So let us not be as the wicked. Let us not walk as the wicked. We should not even want to look like the world looks, Yisrael. We should be a peculiar people unto Almighty Yahweh. Separated. Our minds should be separated from the way this world thinks. Don't you remember me talking about the thoughts of man? It was only evil continuously, Israel? That's why we must have the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. Because only in that mind, Israel, are we going to be preserved. Are we going to be kept. Walking in his high, walking in the light. The life of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just a few more scriptures, Israel, as I bring this to a close tonight. We need Yahweh more than anything in this hour, Israel. I need him more than anything. More than anything. Hallelujah. 
Turn with me to Lucas chapter 17, verse 22. This is Yahshua speaking. Hallelujah. Unto his disciplined ones, unto the house of Israel, unto the chosen. Hallelujah. Lucas chapter, Luke chapter 17, verse 22. And I'm going to read to 33. As I'm going to bring it too close at verse 33, Israel. It says here, and Yahshua said to the disciples. Are we not the disciples? Yeah. Israel. Yeah. Does not the Torah speak unto us even to this day? He said, the yom or the day will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man or the coming. And you shall not see it. And they shall say unto you, see here or see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. For it says, for as the lightning and the and that that lightens out of one part under the Shemayims shines to the other part under the Olam. Do we not see that even when it lightens? Or the lightning, you hear the lightning or the thunder? And you see the flash, how it reflects under the Shemayims or off of the clouds, Israel. He's using this example. So shall also, so shall also the Son of Man be in his yom or in his day, Israel. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Do we think, Israel, we're not going to suffer anything in this present time or in this generation? But you know, Yahshua says here that Yahshua, or that he should suffer many things, did it not? And be rejected of this generation. Verse 26. And as it was in the days of Noah. Did I not talk a little about the days of Noah? So shall it be in those days of the Son of Man, or the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, and they were given in marriage until the day or to the young that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed. Did it say destroy? Yes. Some of them? Just a few were left on the earth. No, it destroyed all of them. Yeah. Verse 28. Likewise also, as, likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot. Do we not talk about the days of Lot? Yeah. Abram, yeah. Solomon, and Gomorrah. Yeah. They did eat, they did drink, they bought and they sold. They planted and they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it says it rained down fire and it rained down brimstone from the Shemayams. And what did it do? It says it destroyed what? Them all. Verse 30. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Has Yahshua been revealed, Yisrael, in your left? Has Solomon and Gomorrah been destroyed in your heart. The wicked things. The wicked thoughts, Yisrael. Verse 31. In that day, it says, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. He says, remember Lot's wife. Do you remember what happened to Lot's wife? So there should not be anything, Yisrael, as Yahshua HaMashiach, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, has delivered us. Not only has he delivered us, but he has washed us, Yisrael. There shouldn't be any trinkets we should want to look back or call ourselves trying to go back for, Yisrael. For he has brought us out with a mighty hand, Yisrael. Quickly. He's brought us out. Hallelujah for the saving of our Nashville. So let us remember Lot's wife. Let us not look back, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. And desire the things that we have been delivered from. The last verse tonight. Hallelujah. As I bring this to a close. 
verse 33. He says, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. What does that say? If we seek to save our lives any other way, but that which has been ordained or commanded of Almighty Yahweh, our life is going to be lost, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And whosoever shall lose his life, and whosoever shall lose his life, shall preserve it. So let us lose our lives, Yisrael. Hallelujah. In Yahshua HaMashiach. The things that we thought that we had that was worth anything, yes. just give it up, Israel. Yeah. Give up your will, yeah. what you desire, your aspirations. Yes. Hallelujah. There are men that have the aspiration of moving up in the political life. Yes. They want to move forward in their dreams. Yes. Make more money. Sure. Get a bigger house, a more expensive car. Outshine their neighbors. Sure. Hallelujah. But we as a people of Yah, we should, to, we should desire to let Yahshua shine. Yes. Hallelujah. So let us not look back on those things that Yahweh has delivered us from. Hallelujah. Or even look back on this world, Yisrael. Yes. For it all should be consumed in the ish, in the fire of the indignation of Almighty Yahweh. But let us rest assured, as long as we dwell in the place of safety, we shall be preserved, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. You believe that tonight, Yisrael? Yeah. Has he not kept us thus far? Yeah. Even if we pass in this life, there's a life that is awaiting us, Yisrael. Yeah. And what is that? What is that life? It's to be close, closer on to Almighty Yahweh. Closer to the bosom of Yahshua, Hamashiach. Because if we separate it from him, that is what the second death is, Yisrael. Yeah. Been separated from Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. So let us draw nigh. Let us draw near unto his Ruach, unto his presence, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet. Let us stand, Yisrael. For we are victorious. We are mighty in the might of Yahshua. Hallelujah. No other way. There's no other way we're going to be able to stand. There's no other way we're going to be preserved, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Let us shoot. Let us turn. Uh, to Yerushalayim, hallelujah, as we offer prayer unto Almighty Yah. Almighty Yahweh, we barak you. We give you told, told out for this night, this night of scripture truth, Yahweh, that you have given unto us, Yah. And if we leave this place, Yahweh, let us remember, above all things, that you will not destroy Yisrael, Yah, with this spirit of Sodom, with this age, Abba Yahweh. But you shall bring us out, and you will bring us out. You have brought us out. Hallelujah. By your message of Yahshua HaMashiach. For in all things we do, Baraki, we give you Tola. We ask Yahweh that your Melican will be a camp around those that have come from near and far, Yahweh. That you would bring them back to the appointed place safely, Yah. And that you would give your beloved rest tonight. We have labored today. We have worked, Yahweh. So restore our bodies and we shall Barak you as we arise in the morning. All things we do, Barak you in the precious. In mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do declare, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Yahweh! Hallelujah! Told Yahweh! Hallelujah!